brought this knowledge to them and find out that they just have walls built in front of them. They want to be slaves. That's why my broadcast scares the hell out of socialists. You see, what happens when you broadcast the truth is you piss everybody off. <laughs> I maintain that the only true salvation from any oppression or enslavement is self-empowerment, knowledge, consciousness. This is true rebellion. Don't get caught up in the 87% of people who follow the leader. People who think that they are rebels because they denounce authority simply because it's the latest fashion. Don't march the streets claiming that you are the enlightened one because you read a book or saw a film that gave you a glimpse into an uncommon knowledge. Don't scream phrases into a megaphone that you borrowed from another person's research. And don't proclaim yourself an original thinker because you belong to a group that represents an unpopular belief. Those are all examples of the other side of the coin of groupthink leading a false rebellion. False rebellion is dangerous because it gives the illusion that you are free and thinking for yourself. A true rebellion, a true revolution, begins when you quit following and start leading. And those who end up following you should be taught by you to quit following you and start leading. And the only way to lead successfully is by fully understanding your rights as a human being on this planet. We have very powerful tools on our side called the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. These documents state that no government can deprive us of our natural rights. So how is it happening? You must understand that the elite group controlling our government, our educational system, agriculture, and media are also in control of our free enterprise. Free enterprise is our economic system or our means of production, privately owned and operated for personal benefit. Free enterprise cannot legally be taxed unless it volunteers itself. The reason why income tax seems inescapable is because most every job on the planet requires you to sign a number of documents with fancy wording stating that you are agreeing to be a representative of a corporation or entity. What all of this means is simply that when you sign working papers, which are required by pretty much every employer that you apply to, you are waiving your rights as a natural person protected under the Constitution and agreeing to represent an artificial person that is not protected under the Constitution. It's difficult to avoid because if you do not sign the document waiving your rights, you won't get the job. So why does every employer voluntarily pay taxes, which leads to the requirement of those documents? Because without doing so, the business loses all state and federal benefits provided to private or commercial business. And furthermore, most people simply accept the mistruth that income tax is required by law without investigating it. When your name is presented on a document with the first letter of your first and last name capitalized, it represents capitis diminutia minima, which occurs when a man's family relations alone were changed. It's a minimal loss of rights. When your last name appears in capital letters, it represents capitis diminutia media, which occurs when a man loses his rights of citizenship but not his rights to liberty. This means you can be fined and penalized, but not enslaved or imprisoned. But when your entire name is capitalized on any document, it represents capitis diminutia maxima, which states that a man's condition changes from freedom to bondage. All rights of citizenship and family rights are surrendered. This means you can be fined, imprisoned, and enslaved in any amount for any duration at the whim of the state's suggestion.
But it is important to note that if you do not legally bind yourself to these documents stating that you waive your rights and represent a corporation, you do not have to attend any court. There are two kinds of law on the earth, as I've said. One is called civil law, which is the law of the land, and one is called maritime admiralty, which is called the law of water. The maritime admiralty is banking law. So consequently, the corporation and government and people who want to control you, they create a second you, and that second you that they control, that they created, is all capital letters. Check it out. Anytime you get a bill, you get a lawsuit, you get a fine, a ticket, somebody sends you a bill from the Department of Water and Power, check it out on your driver's license, on your Social Security card, on your insurance cards, Anything having to do with business, your name, will always be in all capital letters because only all capital letters can be dealt with by banks and government. You need to wake up and find out how this stuff really works because once you understand that you don't need to submit yourself as an American to a British commercial venture call courts. You're an American. You don't need to go to court. That's nobody. You only go to court because you agree to go to court. When they send you a subpoena to court or a summons to court, and they've sent you something, you look at it and say, hey, Jack, that's not me. That's in all capital letters. All capital letters is a corporation. Those who are charged under these maritime admiralty courts usually don't understand that they are voluntarily being fined and imprisoned. When a judge calls your name and asks if you are that name, those who say yes are verbally agreeing to represent the artificial person that the name represents. In doing so, you are voluntarily waiving your rights under the Constitution. Your absolute rights as natural persons are the right to life, security, and property. And all of these are very important. Remember that you can never be deprived of these simple rights unless you are willingly waiving them. But you need to understand your rights if you want to be protected under them. When sustainable development is knocking down your door for the right to your property, you need to understand your inherent right to your property, which extends from the visible surface to the center of the earth. But please note that these steps are simply the beginning. They merely treat the symptoms instead of attacking the root. To understand fully how to protect yourself, you need to understand your origin. The true history of this planet has been stifled from the top down. Since the inception of monotheism and the ridicule as well as outlaw in specific cultures of all pagan religions and practices, a lie has been forced upon all civilizations. You have to wonder why powerful empires were threatened enough by paganism to make the practice of such religions punishable by death. This threat didn't end during the Roman Empire. Take a look at how the founders of America by mandate of Great Britain wiped out Native American tribes indiscriminately. Great Britain has also shown some of the most brutal forms of genocide in Africa, India, New Zealand, New Guinea, and many other locations in which pagan tribes still existed. East Timor suffered from one of the most brutal genocides in all of history and was fueled by the United Nations and the United States funding during the Carter administration. Ford and Kissinger visited Jakarta, I think it was December 5th. We know that they had requested that Indonesia delay the invasion until after they left because it would be too embarrassing. And within hours, I think, after they left, the invasion took place on December 7th. What happened on December 7th in 1975 is just one of the great, um, great evil deeds of history. Early in the morning, bombs began dropping on Dili. The number of troops that invaded Dili that day almost outnumbered the entire population of the town. And for two or three weeks, there was just, they just killed people. So the Timorese 
were fleeing into the jungles by the thousands. By late 1977-78, Indonesia set up receiving centers for those Timorese who came out of the jungle waving white flags. Those the Indonesians thought were more educated or who were suspected of belonging to Fredlin or other opposition parties were immediately killed. They took women aside and flew them off to Delhi in helicopters for use by the Indonesian soldiers. They killed children and babies. But in those days, their main strategy and their main weapon was starvation. By 1978, it was approaching really genocidal levels. The church and other sources estimated about 200,000 people killed. Uh, the U.S. backed it all the way. The U.S. provided 90% of the arms. Uh, right after the invasion, arms shipments were stepped up. When the uh, Indonesians actually began to run out of arms in 1978, the Carter administration moved in and increased arms sales. And other Western countries did the same. Canada, England, Holland, and everybody who could make a buck was in there trying to make sure they could kill more Timorese. The last thing that the ones in power want is a sovereign group or tribe setting a positive example for others. It is important to note that followers of monotheistic religions are not to blame, just as not all members of Freemasonry, intelligence agencies, fraternal orders, or political organizations are part of the esoteric agenda that is being carried out in all upper echelons of society. And it's difficult for people to comprehend, but paganism is no more dangerous than understanding surgical procedures. The knowledge can be very useful when applied properly, yet it can also have very detrimental effects if misused or abused. Understand that most all of these problems are not by mistake, but by design. Most people do not understand how colors, shapes, catchwords and phrases, and biological timings are all used as talismans to affect humanity on an emotional and spiritual level. Colors are used hypnotically in every news channel and corporate advertisement. Fast food chains typically use vibrant reds, yellows, and whites in their restaurants to cause the customers to feel hurried and restless. This helps the customers filter in and out quicker to make for more customers. Fine dining restaurants, on the other hand, use very earthy, natural colors such as soft greens, blues, and browns to calm the senses and to make for a more lengthy and peaceful meal. And the same goes for the music that is played at these establishments. Specific musical notations and progressions can give relaxing or exciting stimuli to the body without our knowledge. The music industry goes even further and uses natural rhythms of the heart to map out the tempo of pop songs. This is why 72 beats per minute is used very frequently in pop music. Music is not a product of culture. In 1986, the National Academy of Science found that infants prefer consonant sounds such as perfect fifths rather than dissonant ones. This is just a small example of our natural ability to understand sound. So be very careful when placing a child in front of a TV or near a stereo. Those who believe that children cannot comprehend violence on a TV screen or aggression from music are thinking strictly with the left brain. The child may not rationally understand the words or actions on the screen, but the right brain, even in infants, can absolutely understand everything in its immediate environment because it transmits a frequency that can affect us on a subatomic level. Science has even proven that proper sonic vibrations are essential for the health of our vegetation. Studies done on many ecosystems have shown that when a specific species becomes extinct or moves from an area, another species will replace its song patterns to fit the overall harmony of the vibrations required for plant life to thrive. All these are known as talismans and are used very carefully by corporations and the media. Catchphrases are also used to spark certain emotions in the psyche. When the average person hears the words terror, bombing, gunshots, murder, war, assassination, and so on, the body and the mind respond with heightened alertness and caution. And when events such as assassinations of major leaders, bombings, terrorism, or war happen on large scales throughout the world, the body responds differently at different times, marked biologically and astrologically. The tragic event involving the Branch Davidians at Waco and the Oklahoma City bombings claimed the lives of men, women, and children as they ended in flames on April 19th. This date is a pagan holiday where human sacrifice is made by fire. The tragic events of September 11th, 2001 happened on the Mayan calendar date of 6 Emox, which represents large-scale change. And when the U.S. attacked Afghanistan on October 7th, 2001, this was the Mayan calendar date of 6K, which represents balancing. 
Please understand that these weren't prophecies or predictions. The Mayans simply understood the body's natural cycles. So these unfortunate events are not by chance. One needs only to